So in this video, we're going to talk about switching inductive loads. And by an inductive load, I mean one that has uh, a significant inductance, and, and that almost always comes from uh, the wires arranged in coils. So anything that has a coil of wire is would be considered an inductive load. And the most common one we would be using is the DC motor. Uh, and if you open it up, you'd see lots and lots of coils of wire. So we can model that as a combination of resistance and inductance. And I'll put it in this very simple circuit here where I show a field effect trans transistor, switching it on and off, power supply. Um, let's say there is the resistances of the load is 9 ohms, the inductance is 10 henrys, and the supply is 9 volts. So um, we can look into the, the FET data sheet, and this is the IRF 520, very common N-channel FET, and we can see that the resistance it shows while it's on is a fraction of an ohm, 0.27 ohms. The fall time, in other words, the time it takes to turn off is 20 nanoseconds, okay? That's 20 times 10 to the minus ninth seconds. And um, and the maximum voltage it can sustain between the drain and the source is 100 volts, okay? If it gets above that, bad things can happen and you can destroy the, destroy the FET. So these are, we're gonna use all three of those, these specifications um, in our analysis. We start with a very simple analysis of this circuit, right? That the, the, the supply voltage, E sub S, is equal to the sum of the voltage drop across the load resistor, a drop of the load inductor, and across the FET itself, right? And so you can see this uh, fairly simple formula, and I'm gonna combine the load and the um, switching resistance into one spot. Um, and we now, it's a differential equation, right? But like a, a difference equation, it's interesting to see what it says at steady state, which is when the derivatives settle out, right? De the derivatives go to zero. And then we have a very simple current, uh, solution for the current that says the steady state current is the supply voltage divided by the sum of the resistors and ends up being about 0.97 amps, right? So um, not surprising, pretty straightforward. But here's the part that gets interesting, that when we switch the FET off, so, so we turned it on by maybe, you know, turning on a five volt pin that was attached to the gate. Now we set it to zero and that the field is drained away from the gate, it turns off and it does it very quickly. And so you can look up in the data sheets and it shows that from that steady state value to zero, it ramps down and it may not be a perfectly good ramp, but, but the point is it does it in a very short period of time, which in the case for this, this FET is 20 nanoseconds. So we can look at the slope of that curve and figure out what the derivative of the current is during the turning off phase. And it's, it drops by 0.97, so it's zero minus 0.97 amps, does it in 20 times 10 to the minus ninth seconds. And so that's a little under five, times 10 to the eighth amps per second. So it's a really large, and it's a negative slope, right? A very large negative number that shows up in there. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that's problematic because that actually is what ends up in the equation, right? So we can go back to the equation. Um, let's go back to the circuit and see what that big negative derivative means. And um, so, we, let's break down where these voltage drops are. So we have this this whole this line of components has E sub S, and then below that we have a drop by the load resistance times I, then another drop because of the uh, inductor, and then the the final drop because of the the FET, right? So it's that voltage above that drain to source voltage um, that we're interested in, and that's what we don't want to exceed 100 volts, right? So we can show that that EDS is equal to that source minus RI minus LDIDT, right? So it's just kind of looking the loop a little bit differently. It's just the loop equation juggling it around. And um, and so E, e sub S is still 9 volts. R times I, well I is changing with time, but it knows it's, it's less than 1 and it goes from 1 to 0, so and that's 9 ohms. So that E sub S and, and R times I are roughly the same order of magnitude, right? They're both like around 9. Whereas this LDIDT is a large negative number times 10, L is, L is 10. And so we get this really large positive number for EDS, uh, a huge voltage essentially, right? And, and this is, um, could then cause 
most sure surely would cause the the field effect transistor to fail um, and that's you know then you've got to go find another one the problem is is that they they don't fail visibly you can't look at it and say oh look it's broken uh, it just stops working and then you wonder is it my program is it the computer or, you know is it is it something else in my circuit um, so that's always a hard thing to find so we want to we want to we want to we want to make sure this doesn't happen so we have to dissipate the energy right the inductor is you think of it almost like a spring it can store energy due to the current that's in it and we can calculate that energy uh, through a very simple relationship that says um, e is one half l i squared right so, so uh, and at steady state i is 0.97 we know l is 10 and uh, and we can calculate it's about 1.8 joules okay so it's not a lot of energy um, a joule is not a big unit uh, but we do have to get rid of it somehow right and that's the problem is it's it's there and then we, we have no path for it all of a sudden when the fed closes i'm sorry when the fed opens and and we have to dissipate it well it turns out there's a very easy solution to this uh, this is sometimes called the flyback effect and we fix it by something called the flyback diode and uh, and basically we just put a diode in parallel with our inductive load and uh, that and have it so that for normal operation it's reverse biased right so it points against points away from the normal direction of current flow so when it's operating when the motor's running or your solenoids operating the diode's not doing anything it's reverse biased no current flows right think of this diode as a one-way valve um, and it doesn't really change the uh, the behavior of our circuit at all. But once that voltage at uh, at the at the the um, the drain of the FET starts to rise above the supply voltage, nine volts, and we know it will, it gets much much higher than that. As soon as it gets about seven tenths of a volt above the supply voltage, it's now forward biased and and it'll start conducting and because of the way diodes work it the diode clamps that voltage at the forward bias so it never gets above 9.7 volts in other words the i'm going to say that again the voltage at the drain can't go above 9.7 9 being the supply voltage 0.7 being the forward bias voltage of the diode it clamps it down and and then and also provides a path for that current that you think of like almost like the momentum of the current to go through and it'll just circulate around it'll go through the resistor and inductor again until it all dissipates away right um, some of it might actually find its way back into the power supply generally that's not much of a problem but it'll sit there and it'll 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 do a quick circulate through the coil um, and disappear and that's uh, and that's really uh, how to fix it and that's what we'll have to do in class when we hook up any kind of inductive load always make sure you put a diode in there and the and the the actual diode doesn't matter very much there's very uh, very simple they call them switching diodes that um, small signal diodes that uh, work fine you don't really have to dissipate an awful lot of um, of energy here uh, you, what I'm calculating here is the the rate of the power right the rate of energy dissipation um, and it's a you know it's it's a fraction of a watt uh, but it, it only does it for you know nanoseconds right it does not take very long to do it at all so so that's it that's how you protect your uh, your FET when you're switching an inductive load